Hello, everybody, and welcome to Adobe Live. We would like to begin by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land in which we are streaming from today. We'd also like to pay our respects to elders past, present, and emerging. My name is Flynn, and I'm here today once again with the amazing Christy Campbell. Hi, Christy. How are you? Hello. I'm great. How are you, Flynn? I'm very great. Yeah, I'm glad that I can hear you and you can hear me. We had like a panic attack like a minute before the stream started Small where one. we couldn't hear each other, but everything worked out, <laughs> which is great. Um, so we are here. Um, so this is part two of a two-part series. Um, we did part one yesterday, building a brand from scratch, um, Mr. Maple, uh, which has been which was really fun. Lots of tips and, and tricks and stuff in there. So if you missed it, you can always watch it on replay here on Behance or on YouTube, uh, Asia Pacific channel as well. And um, we might, I don't know, Christy, maybe we'll do a quick little recap. So those that missed yesterday can kind of catch up and then we can do today a title that I just really like, The Rollout. It reminds me of Transformers. Oh, I like that. A bit of Transformer vibes going on for today. Yeah, yeah, so basically what we did yesterday was work on Mr. Maple, which was a little boutique waffle house. And we ended up creating a logo and a mini brand identity that was very playful, fun, like memorable um, and quirky as well. And I wanted to create this uh, almost character, this um, mascot style brand mark for the business. Um, so we created this cute little guy over here. Um, we drew them out, so if you want to go watch that, give it a go. It'll show you the ins and outs of how we got here. Um, and we also just started to pull it together um, using color palette and even uh, working on some sort of full, um, what I call the nine grid, um, and just mm. seeing how that's applied across this grid. But basically today we're going to um, carry on as though we're going to create a brand identity for a business and we're going to basically roll it out and when we're rolling things out we're creating all the marketing collateral um so things like you know whatever you need business cards stickers signage vehicle signage all that good stuff but um we'll be just working through a couple of things today i just want to show you some applying some graphics to mock-ups and even creating um, a packaging lid and even a little menu design as well so let's jump straight ahead that's awesome so just so just before we do that, when do you often get the like get it within a brief, um, the sorts of things that they would would need or does sometimes the client not know what they might might need things for in the future? So you create kind of mock ups, just, you know, kind of a little bit of guesswork, a little bit of like guesstimation of what the sorts of things that like a waffle foodery kind, kind of place might need. Yeah, for sure. So typically clients might say oh hey look i really would like a thank you card to put with my orders when i send them out something like that or even in an instance like this they might say oh, hey look i've got a um, a shop that i'm opening and i'm going to have signage so we'll typically put together mock-ups that basically represent uh, what they're going to create and hopefully and if they don't have sorry if they don't have uh, ideas or marketing collateral that they've got in the first instance will certainly create stuff for them that we think they would use. So things like, you know, stickers or um, like tissue paper that could wrap their waffles with, um, that kind of stuff. Cool. Awesome. So we'll go ahead. So from here, it's really fun nine grid. We've got the bubbly uh, mascot design here. I'm just going to show you creating a couple of mock-ups and how easy it is. So I'll open uh, Photoshop here. So one of the best things I did when I was um, starting my business, and I never really understood before I started my business, but um, actually investing money into your mock-ups is key because honestly, it makes a huge difference having high quality mock-ups. And if you don't, typically they're just not gonna be very good. Um, they're just gonna be average really. So. We want to make sure our mock-ups, I'm in trim view here, uh, you know, um, really high quality. Um, and then you can just build up your um, your mock-up portfolio and your mock-up folders as well and have lots on file. Um, so I'm actually just going to go ahead and change the color of this pattern so we can go ahead and apply this bad boy. I should have just actually duplicated the swatch there so I didn't use the same. Gee, I feel like I almost like it with the orange better. Looks kind of cool. Um, that's yeah. the fun thing about colors, isn't it? Like just kind of playing around and you get these like happy accidents happening. Um, and speaking of colors, um, Annika in chat. Hello, Annika. Streamer in the chat. What's up? Um, and question for you. How does Christy check for color contrast when creating a brand identity? 
Um, for for me, it's just really about she mean like readability and things like that on color. Um, I guess it's all about trial and error. Luckily, as well with color contrast and uh, exact color specs, I've got um, the the Max screen, the really like quite expensive Max screen. So that really helps out with um, readability of things and just making sure things are legible. Um, and making sure they look great together. Um, cool. Let's actually put this, pull this little guy. Did that answer the question, Annika? Hopefully. Let us uh, know. Dive um, in there was yeah. also another question as well, for sort of follow up um, about color blindness check within Illustrator. Um, have you ever used? Have you ever used that, or felt the need to use use that feature? No. Oh. So this is the, the thing, thing with Illustrator. <laughs> We're well, all learning. As a color blind person. Um, it's interesting because there's color blindness is quite different. There's about four or five different spectrums and they're so, yeah. they're so different. So I think it is very challenging to like, I've, I've often found things like it might be a website or, or a game as well in gaming. It's quite yeah. a big thing. And I've never, mm. ever actually found them all that useful for me. The main oh. thing I've found has been just high contrast. So as long as yeah. something's contrasted enough, um, yeah. I can always sort of see everything and recognize things. It's when mm. there's not a lot of contrast and the colors start blurring together and you're trying to, for something that like, like type, I don't know, like blue on a purple background, a certain type for of sure. colorblind person is going to really struggle to see that. Um, yeah. So I don't know. That's just like a little tidbit from uh, in the trenches here um, for those of us who don't see normally. Yeah. So you're colorblind. Yeah. Yeah. Is, there's just certain colors that you struggle to see. Yeah, Is so that... blue and purple kind of blend together ah, um, quite a yeah. lot. Um, red and pinks aren't super great, but also green and browns aren't super great. Oh, so okay. I'm pretty heavily um, colorblind in, in different things. But, um, yeah, yeah, it's interesting. Like I've never found an accessibility thing where I thought, oh, my God, this has solved it. This is the solution. I think, yeah. uh, I think we're just a bit special and can't see things quite as well. You're unique. It makes you truly unique. Yeah. Yeah, we'll say um, that. I'll take it. <laughs> well, def I'm definitely going to have to uh, look into that, to be honest, because um, that was something that I actually, a, a tool that I didn't know existed. As I said before, we're always learning. Yeah, um, always. You know, no matter, especially with things like design and, and Adobe, there's always something new to learn, which is awesome. I'm just trying to, oh, that looks quite cool. That looks really cool. You can see cool. here. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Just pulling together, uh, you know, a little mock-up, showcasing the client. Hey, look, if this is the proposal that we're going to go with, the branding, this is what it could potentially look like applied to your yummy, delicious waffles. That's awesome. And so we were talking before about like high quality mock-ups. So you can see the lighting yeah. and everything happening on the mm. on on the paper. Like, and how, and also like we got to talk about like how quickly you can create something like that. Um, so like, quick. You know, it's. It's great to have the skills to create your own mock-ups, but it's it's a whole art form in itself. And I know designers have been working for a very long time and they'll, they'll just talk about how long it can take to try to get, Completely. To, to create like a template, even if it's just a bus shelter or something. Um, yeah. To try to get the light right, the reflection right, to place something correctly, have it mimic the light once you've placed it in. Um, so yeah, it's definitely something to be said about investing in resources that can speed you up to create more as well. Yeah, um, completely agree. Yeah. And I think, um, you know, yeah, you can totally make your own, but again, it's like a lot of time and effort can go into that. Um, so it's, it's better off to, to purchase these mock-ups, um, ourselves and have a bank of them to use, you know, throughout our work and, and. Yeah, and enjoy them and use them yep. for multiple different clients. Yeah, that's it. I actually can't. Oh, there we go. I couldn't work out why oh, our little waffles. waffles weren't popping up. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> I was trying to get them to appear. I wasn't quite sure what was going on there. All right, so in this mock-up, we've got our label at the front here. So I want to add a cool little uh, design that we can use for the sleeve as well for our waffles. Maybe Mr. Maple have got some takeaway waffles in their, um, uh, what would you call this? In their product, I don't want to say product line, that's not the right word. <laughs> menu? A menu, that's, that's the one. There we go, in their menu. All right, so 
You can see here, I've actually opened up a new document. I've set this up prior, and it's basically the size of the label that we want to use. Now for something like this, Typically, obviously, the actual product itself would have a die line, so it would be quite long. It would probably have a little edge on the side where you can fold it under and stick it together. But for this case, in like brand proposals, I would simply create the flat design just for the front, so I'm not having to go through and create the whole die line and everything. We're basically just showing the client, hey, look, again, this is the um, type of uh, sleeve that you could use throughout your um, food and just give them a bit of insight as to what it would look like as a real life brand, basically. Yeah. So I'm gonna cool. pop this. We're gonna pop this on the front and we're gonna use this copy here as well. So serving up smiles one waffle at a time. <laughs> you know what's great about this too? Guess who wrote this? Chat GPT. Yeah, you, you knew it. <laughs> <laughs> It's amazing, you know, isn't it? For stuff like, um, I mean, I, I, one of the things I realized is Lorem Ipsum is, is no more. Like there's no reason in your content anymore because you can just totally. go to chat GPT and say, hey, write me a 500 word paragraph on whatever the topic is you're mocking something up, pop it in and then, you know, it looks legit. Oh, isn't it crazy? Even this little um, quote, you know, like I was like trying to think of one. And I was like, you know what? We can get... Um, we can we can get someone else to write this for us today. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so what did you put in? Like something like, hey, can I have some slogans for a waffle shop or something? That is pretty much it. So I yeah. just said, uh, like, write me a cute slogan for a waffle shop. <laughs> okay. Beautiful. There we go. Uh, let's actually change. I need to figure out what that font is. Chunky Retro. Um, I'm just doing a little bit of uh, shuffling around to actually, we're going to bump this up. we go dropping down a bit um no no this is too way too slow all right let's go here we go you know what i'm actually gonna i wanna let's just outline this guy here we're gonna bring this font to here here we go all right and oh, we, I like that. As a, I, I'm just going to just mention I really like how you put the the other font over the original one to line up the uh, the baseline and the sender. Yeah, well. just, good, just good tip. it really is. And it just keeps everything consistent again. Mm -hmm. Sometimes between script fonts and, say, a sensor, if the, the height of the lettering isn't like, doesn't look similar, if you even try and follow that rule of thumb, I guess. Mm -hmm. But in this case, actually, it looks pretty good. So, um, because all those little bits of details, they count when you're creating your design work. It almost looks a little bit too far over again. So I'm liking the way that it's looking here. So we just want to create something that's really fun, captures the brand, you know, um, Gonna to pull together this website here too and pop them down there. Um, I actually don't remember what. Oh, here's our subheading font Urbanist. Oh, well done. You're prepared. Brilliant. Yep. I was have pre prepared. You had, <laughs> have you ever had a client like you'd show mock ups to a client and then it's something they hadn't really thought of and they get really excited? They're like, oh my God, we have to make these. Like the classic totally. is a tote bag or like t shirt or, you know, hats or something like that. The clients tend to oh. get really excited right because they're seeing their brand come to life in this very professional kind of way for sure and i think as well they don't expect things like that mm. from a brand designer like i'm we almost don't tell them that we're going to show them what it's going to look like on you know on a window or right. um on a hat so that they when they when they get their brand proposal they're like wow this looks amazing like mm. this has really inspired me um yeah, it's always a nice little way to like wow your clients. Um, yeah, it just brings a lot of joy because I think as well, like as a as a business owner, when you're creating a brand and you haven't actually, you've never had a logo, say, imagine the feeling you must get when you first see your brand visually come to life. Mm. Um, it must be pretty awesome. Yeah, it will be for sure. So yeah, as you said, especially if it's like this 
your baby, right? I think you spoke. You mentioned yeah. you speaking about your um, about Pink Pony Creative as like watching my baby grow. Like it's exactly like that. Um, yeah. And seeing it kind of come to life um, for the very first time. Maybe it's an idea they've had for ten years or something, or they've you know this side project they're really excited about. It's um, it's very exciting. So yeah. Oh, completely. Yeah, it must be thrilling. Even to be honest, as well, like with my girls, my staff. They create some awesome stuff and sometimes um you know we're all working away and then after a while i'll look over my shoulder and they've created this like awesome bit of work and i'm just like wow that looks good yeah um, and i feel like it's what the clients must feel like a lot of the time too i thought it'd be quite cute to bring in these little these little guys into kind of like we did on here actually yeah i almost quite like the colorway there it's quite nice I might even give that a go. See what this looks like. Maybe we'll put one upside down. Make it a bit fun. Except now his drips aren't dripping the right way. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine that you'd have That's to right. do like every like iteration, but with the the drips going in a different direction. Oh, <laughs> it's too far. But you this could, works yeah. anyway because it's going to go around like this, right? So one's yeah. dripping this way and one's dripping this way. Exactly. So it's not too not too bad. Um, all right, I'm actually going to show a little cool trick. Um, it's actually with a plugin in, of Illustrator, and I've loved using it at the moment. So I'm going to select that. I'm going to find our texture pack from Astute Graphics, and we're going to add a little halftone heaven in here hmm. and drop that scale down, drop the opacity down. I'm gonna add a little texture because you know as they say well in design when you add a little texture it adds, adds just a little a little bit of sparkle mm. i love adding textures i think it's become uh quite a common thing in my design routine my design process right um is it to get a bit away from having like just pure like it seemed like it's pure vector art and what, yeah what's what's the feeling behind i that? personally feel it can really add like an element of character and like almost realism into it as well yeah. like if you were you know if you had a a, a brand that was very uh, like a handwritten style you want it to feel really personal maybe you would add a texture where it's like almost like a little notebook or like a bit of rolled up paper i think it adds to the character it's again a way to like push your say personality through your brand in a unique way mm. i'm actually going to put this in. let's go back here we're going to use CC libraries today. I've created oh, a new library and call it Mr. Maple. Could have actually used them before um, when I was adding in the graphics to the mock-up. That's interesting. Um, Maybe that we could just touch on that as like two different kind of methods and um, there's not really a right or wrong way to, to do yeah. that sort of thing. Because I work in a similar way that you're working right now. I like to have kind of all of my assets sort of sitting off the canvas. Mm. Um, I think we had... Um, I think it was Dale Bugini was on last um, last week, and oh, you're cool. um, and he creates like sticker sheets. So he basically, mm. you know, will basically have one folder that has all of his final artwork, um, just individually expanded, like rasterized, like ready yeah. to go. Um, and he'll sort of flick between the two, um, so he'll copy and paste into you know each separate uh, oh, Illustrator amazing. folder. And that's they're all different ways of doing the same thing. Um, yeah. So he prefers to do that because he likes kind of having a clean look to his project file. So, mm. um, and then of course there's Creative Cloud Libraries, which I think is really strongest when you're going between multiple apps. Um, totally. When you're using branding that you're using a lot, like a ongoing client or your own mm. branding. I'm sure you have a folder in there with all of the Pink Pony uh, assets and. Things I definitely do. <laughs> um, so just a shout out for people if you're wondering about. Um, different ways to kind of manage your assets and working on projects yeah. and things like that. Yeah, and I think it's really important. I like the the effect, the fact that you touched on not, you know, all these different ways of doing something. Um, there's so many different ways and you just do whatever works for you because I think like, especially at university and even like when you're starting to, uh, you know, go out on your own or go into the industry, it can be really scary and intimidating and looking at what other people do, you're like, oh, maybe I should be doing that. Yeah. But if you find a way that works for you, been perfect yeah. um cool i actually really like how this is looking so we're gonna we're actually gonna save this little guy we're just gonna save him in case you want to use him on a layout later 
Uh, that's looking awesome. And same again here. I actually quite like the color palette. Oh, I just inverted it by accident. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> I <laughs> uh, quite like the color palette just being even the dark blue, the orange and the purple. Yeah. It's quite unique, but mm. yeah, I really, really like it. Mm. All right, cool. So we've made a few mock-ups. We've made a little label for our waffles, these takeaway waffles that look a tiny bit dry, but that's cool. Um, <laughs> the waffles themselves. They yeah, the travel. waffles themselves. They didn't travel very that's well. The one. Yeah. <laughs> And then again, I mean, like coming back to this nine grid, another uh, reason why I love this, you know, we can actually add in our uh, our mock-ups to this to really start to get a feel of what something might look like and as a brand as a whole. Um, so I think, yeah, I think it's really, let's actually move this here, move this here. It can be really beneficial. Um, just an easy way to see an overview of the brand. All right, let's quickly just do a little clippy mask here. It's a pity that we can't see the uh, keyboard shortcuts um, somehow because there's so many of them that we use so quickly. Yeah, yeah. All right. I, I, oh, that'd be that'd be amazing for me if there was like yeah. an inbuilt, inbuilt key logger uh, and display that you could turn on for. Adobe apps, my gosh. That, that would be cool. cool. <laughs> yeah, that would be really cool. So you can kind of see it coming together. I mean, it's looking, starting to look really, really cool. Yeah. Really funky, fun. We love Mr. Maple. <laughs> um, all right, so we've made a couple of mock-ups. We would put them into a brand proposal. And let's actually come over to a menu design, which is something that maybe uh, the client actually wants once we've finalized the branding and they want to create their menu. Um, and again, like typically I would actually make something like this potentially in InDesign because InDesign is so good for like page layout. But just for this purpose, I've actually just used, I've gone ahead and used Illustrator as well. And again, it's kind of up to you and your preference too. Mm. I know that there's quite a few people out there that actually don't have as much experience in InDesign um, as they would in say Illustrator and Photoshop. But yeah, for sure. InDesign can be pretty amazing. It's actually, I'm going to make, let's give this a go. So I've actually, prior to coming on, I've set up this little grid um, using guides and using that tool that we saw yesterday, which was just creating anything basically into a guide. Um, so to do that, if, you, if you're wondering, we pretty much just rule our line or maybe it's a box and you can just press command five and it will make it a grid, which is amazing. It's awesome. So it makes it a guide that will snap. It can snap to. Um, yeah. So you can set up like any kind of. You could do a Fibonacci spiral on your artboard. You could. And then turn it into if you wanted to. Exactly. I'm pretty sure. Let's give this a go. Let's try and turn this into a guide, see what happens. There you go. Yep. It's the guide. <laughs> <laughs> so I think it, it could do anything. Anything. Don't know what you'd use that for as a guide. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But that's fun. Um, so I want to create this menu. I've got this copy here and I was thinking of doing kind of like a cool, um, we've got our main, so our main, main offerings and then we've got a couple broken down on the left side here. So I'm going to split everything off into a nice grid again. And I want it to be just like fun, relaxed. So instead of using this square face, I'm actually going to, we're going to add some corners, some rounded corners. We're going to put them on some tilts um, just to add to that kind of relaxed feel that the brand has. Mm. There we go. We can see that. Boom. Nice, easy. Nice, easy little round of corners. And again here. All right. I, I always, um, if my mum or dad are looking over my shoulder as I design, they always uh, say to me, Christy, you do things way too quickly. Oh. I wonder you have to go back and forth, back and forth. <laughs> uh, it's just the way I was brought up, you know? All right. Oh, That's great. A little bit. I love that. I also love the idea of your mum and dad just like over the shoulder watching you design. Oh, they love like to do that. Coming into, Even... coming into the studio. <laughs> Even my husband. Yeah, yeah they're, they're like, what are you up to? Even my husband looks over my shoulder. He's like, what? How do you do that? I don't know how you do that. Oh, too good. I think I've got my smart guides turned on. Are you also tech support for your family? 
I am, to yeah. be honest. I really am. I think, is that some kind of creative or like designer thing that we somehow got at tech as I well? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it is. It's a true yeah. thing. Yeah. Let's pull this. I'm actually going to make another layer and call it text. I think the biggest thing with like when you're creating more complex documents, it's so important to use your layers um, because I think this is where it can get really handy. You just lock things. Um, I'll just call them shapes um, and make look every, everything tidy, easy to use, easy to follow. I reckon let's go, let's call them hot and oh my gosh, the word delicious keeps coming up. Here we go. <laughs> Today I've spelt it right. Nice. Do you have words like that where you just always spell them incorrectly? I do. I always. can't spell thorough. That's a hard word yeah. to spell. Yeah. <laughs> I feel that it's for sure. Yeah. We know in chat you're going to have to type it uh, if there's a word that you struggle to spell. Oh yeah, so you're going to have to type the word out. Yeah. You're putting everyone to test today. Yeah. Oh no. <laughs> Need to know. Yep. It's funny. It's like it's like this blank like part in your brain just can't can't spell it out. I just can't do it. Oh, for sure. Every time. Um we did a campaign the other day and the word receive was on there. And mm. that's cheeky. That's got the cheeky I before E except it does C and Yeah. That's just, you know, it's too much to keep up with. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So I'm just going through and actually just adding all the um copy into here for our um, all right. So the other day I put on my Instagram and it turned into a heated argument oh, yeah. about, uh, Poppins being an overused font. <laughs> right. Okay. What I are mean, we, that's a, what's that's, the feeling? I mean, it's a good font. I mean, this happens with every font that's good. It is. Like, mm. um, but also there's of course the idea of using a trendy font in a, yeah. The brand can it age the brand because mm. but also at the same time no one really notices fonts except for designers um, that's a good point <laughs> you are so right there <laughs> you can kind of debate until the cows come home but you know at the end of the day most people vast majority of people unless it's papyrus or oh uh, yeah or you know then they'll know or something then you know i think we're, i think you're pretty safe I agree. I don't know. What actually. do you th What do you think? Do you have you used it? I, do you like enjoy? I definitely it? used to, and I don't think it's a bad font at all. Yeah. I think I just see it so much. Yeah. And there's 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 so many other great um, Google fonts that I just have not been like I haven't seen people use. So there's even um, this font here. This is not a Google font, but it's um, it's an open source font, so it is free to download from. Got it from Frontier. There's another one um, called like Man Rope. This is from Google as well. That's a really nice font that looks similar to Poppins. Let's just have a look. Because I'm curious now. Poppins is probably going to look exactly the same. Mm. Yeah, you know, similar. It's pretty close. Yeah, it is pretty close. It is a nice font, you know. Mm. Mm. It's clean. We love a clean font. I actually think I prefer this one. So I'm going to go with that one. Nice. Ooh, we've accidentally clicked a hotkey. Do you have a Do you have a font that you see out in the wild like all the time, and it just sticks out to you? Uh, yes, there's one. Um, I think it's Avenue. Yeah, oh, Avenue yeah, something. Yeah. yeah, that's a that ha that's a, around a lot. Yeah, a lot of com companies use it. Yeah, that was our body but copy font for a company I worked for for about six years. So yeah, I recognize that. Oh font. wow. <laughs> yeah. I used it again across like two different companies I worked for, similar to you. And it was their like main body copy font. Um and again, you know, it's timeless. Yeah. People just love it. Um so I'm going through work. and I'm just making it does. It really does. It's a good font. All right, we're just going through and creating this um this text here making it look really uh clean i think the biggest thing with like layout is obviously alignment spacing um and just making sure everything's really clean again and you could use things like paragraph styles and, and things like that but to be honest in the in the workflow that i do especially for something like this where it's not a huge document i'll typically actually just do a lot of copying pasting um mm. and laying it out in that way um 
Yeah. I mean, it probably depends, right? Like there's obviously some people would jump into it. Um, InDesign, as you mentioned before, and kind of set mm. up the paragraph styles and everything and then kind of start typing yeah. away before they even start doing layout. But if it's not yeah. a multi-page document, yeah, I wouldn't personally open InDesign. If it was a single page, I'd be copying and pasting. I'd do something very similar to what you've done here. Um, and yeah. then one, I don't know if you're about to do it, but once I got one column, I would just grab it all and duplicate, then duplicate and just bring it That's over That's the one. Yeah. Yep, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. If you're doing like That's a multi-page a menu for like a, you know, I'm thinking of like fancy restaurants where they might have a lot of wines and, and things like that. Um, mm. And it was 10, 20 pages and they're going to need to update it in the future and you're handing over assets. Then I think that would, that would be when something like InDesign, I think would really show it the value. If as oh, long completely. As they had someone that knew how to use it. Yeah. We're, and we're going to, um, we're, if we're going to do the cheeky, uh, box spacing i love which, this you know, i still do this i do this all oh, the time like you're not a designer if you don't use a box <laughs> for spacing <laughs> i even do it when it tells me that it's smart and it's snapped and everything and i'm like i'm just going to check with one of my little boxes thank you very much <laughs> i'm glad yeah i'm glad you do it too actually i'm stoked <laughs> i like seeing designers do it that's why <laughs> so do i i actually do because i'm like you go you make that box it looks <laughs> great what have we done here we've done banoffee this is looking fun I like how this is coming together. Um, oh, where are we up to? Oh, here we go. All right. Oh, look, and we've got a couple more. And actually, it might work out perfectly. Now, for a menu like this as well, like, I just want it to feel fun. I want it to kind of scream waffles, deliciousness. Actually, something that we should be doing for sure is adding the logo. And I want to actually add it in some kind of like lockup situation where let's grab let's grab all these i'm actually just going to change these and put them on your new layer so i can just lock my shapes um let's try let's try these i'm gonna drop these down so let's actually add it actually could look a bit it might be a bit much with both of our fonts there could be actually i've got an idea an idea guys let's try something i'm gonna do a little drip floating down at the top and it's gonna be our lockup for our logo so let's bring our pen tool from yesterday that we were using lots of and create a little drip hmm. a little drip -a so it's interesting as well you couldn't have done i mean you could do it but not quite to the same fidelity that in indesign as well like as you're designing on the fly would have been a little bit a little bit it would have been hard difficult. yeah yeah and i think as well like when it comes to i wonder if it's gonna look good or not um something like this if i know i'm gonna be adding like custom illustrations or um like vectors that are gonna be way more customized i will do an in, in indesign mm. um, and because of the nature of this brand and i want it to feel really fun i thought you know probably better to do it in an illustrator so i can have room to make those custom illustrations. Yeah. Um, and for those right, who missed out on um, yesterday's stream as well, it's just a simplify or smooth tool that you were using then, wasn't it? Yeah, to yeah. So drip look drippy. That's the one. So you can smooth it over and actually just like basically smooth over the the vector parts, or by using the pencil tool, you could actually kind of manipulate the path without manipulating the whole vector where actually you just redraw a certain path. Mm. Hopefully that made sense. Um, let's try and draw them again. Oh, there we go. It's probably a little bit better. All right. And I think I'm going to add, let's actually add a drip here. Whoa, that was a cute little drip. <laughs> it was a great trip. A, I really yeah. like the first one as well. This long, this other. Um, the first, long one. Yeah. That's like a, yeah. it's a thick drip, right? Like that looks like it's got weight to it. Like there's. Yeah. Got a, it's got a bit of maple syrup. syrup. Mm -hmm. That's the one. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think like textures and stuff like this as well, that can be used repeatedly throughout a brand can really help it like, again, come alive. Mm -hmm. And then you can use them throughout things like social media and um really like brand up the business again with those like just repeating motifs yeah um 
let's see how this all comes together oh you know what maybe i'm going to do the it's not quite the right shape is it for the, the drips there's lots of different things that i could do here to make this work um maybe i'm gonna come over we're gonna grab this one let's try this might even have to make the drip a little bit wider You know, I'm not the biggest fan of it, but again, we'll just work through it. Uh, and you just continue creating until you're really happy. Mm. Something like this, like a menu design would typically take, you know, me a couple of hours. So, you know, fitting it all in an hour's work is- Yeah, um, totally. Yeah. And sometimes you need to kind of step up and walk away or print it out or show someone else or, you know, go do some emails for a while or go for a walk and then come back and then you're like, oh no, okay, that's not working. I need to get rid of it. Exactly. This. I'm actually going to get rid of the little guy there and make this a lot bigger. All right, let's, this is looking better. This is, I think, a bit better. It's coming along. We're getting there. I'm actually going to remove the guides again and just refine this a little bit. So, cool. Okay. Okay, cool. I mean, we're coming, we're coming together. It's looking great. Nice. Getting there. You know, this is where I'd probably go in and really uh, adjust this point with the pen tool rather than the brush tool because I was wanting to get a really smooth line from the border there, like so the drip looks like it's just flowing on in. Mm. Um. Yeah, I think that's perfect. Oh, all right. Looks great. Let's try again here. Yeah. Coming together. It's fun. It's groovy. Mr. Maple's obviously got great, great waffles. When we finished our Adobe Live yesterday, we all couldn't stop talking about how much we wanted waffles. I know. Just, I made the mistake of not eating lunch before this stream as well. So, oh, no. Making me, <laughs> making me hungry again. <laughs> No. Oops. Yeah, definitely want the waffles. I actually don't like that one, so I'm going to delete them. <laughs> Just cut through it, really. Let's change this to waffles. All right. Cool. I mean, I, I guess I could just keep working on this forever. I'm a really bad singer, so. I thought, that was, I thought that was great. Thank you. <laughs> Um, by All the way, right. as we're going through the stream, um, if there are any questions from chat as we're as we're rolling through, don't hesitate to throw them in. We can answer them. Uh, we are live, so don't hesitate to throw questions. We sure can. We sure can. Please send the questions our way. Johanna's saying in chat, know. I haven't stopped thinking about waffles since yesterday's stream. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I know. I actually desperately want waffles now. I'm gonna I'm gonna go find some this weekend. I reckon. No, I'm actually coming over to Australia this weekend from New Zealand. Oh, are you? I am. Cool. Where are you coming, headed? Ju jumping over the bridge. A place called Maruchador. Maruchador? Yeah. yeah. Do you know where that is? I do. Yeah. Been oh, there cool. once. Not for a long time, but um, oh, it's beautiful. yeah, that's cool. Um, a little family trip. Family trip. I was going to ask if that was a wedding. That could be a wedding place as well. But It uh, could be. Trip. Yeah, no, we're going because I turned 30 this year. And so we decided as a family and my husband and my um, siblings partners, they we were all going to go for a fun weekend away. Nice. How, how good. Up to Queensland. Very cool. Yeah. So it should be awesome. So no no design work this weekend. Lovely. I'm going to try and not. Take a break. Yeah, I'm going to hold back. Take a break. That's the one. I'm not good at my breaks. I love. I just love working. <laughs> <laughs> I seriously do. Like, I'm like, I just love what I do. So it's not like, you know, a problem for me. Mm. Just love it. Love designing. Let's get in there. All right. So we're almost finished our little waffles here. Our waffle menu. See, again, I'm using, I'm using the copy and paste method, which completely up to you, which you'd prefer. I'm just going to extend that a little bit more. Um, and yeah. do you have any thoughts on like the amount of fonts that you would want to use within a within a brand, like from the logo to the H one, H two, H three? 
do you yes. usually try to just focus on one font for a client so that it keeps things simple or yeah i'd certainly rules? stick yeah i'd stick with say and like in this case this is a perfect example what we typically do in um, our design work you know obviously we've got our body copy and our well our header sorry this is our header here mm. uh, we've got our subheading uh, which could be above below our body copy um, and I try and keep them typically the subheading and the bodies can most of the time be the same font um, especially it kind of avoids confusion for the clients and things but um, in this case we have a different slightly different fonts uh, for all all three and then sometimes we do especially for a band like this we add what we call like a highlighter font where we're kind of highlighting a key bit of information um you know it could be a word could be a word in a heading or maybe a word in like a quote it's like a fun way of just adding to your um style of font really and the brand as well mm. um like yeah so typically font. like mm. yeah highlighter font so no more definitely no more than four but typically three fonts is where we'd be sitting um all right i'm gonna actually just add one more uh the big g here we're kind of cheating because we're missing one of the fonts but that's cool i'm just gonna push on with it makes it easy to fit content into something when you're the you're the client you're like oh it doesn't have you're to be the that creator. Long, actually <laughs> exactly <laughs> it can be tough like I don't know, you've probably, I'm sure you would have been the same. Uh, there's been instances in my de design career will, where people say, you know, I want this on a one page and there's like a million bits of information. That's so You're hard, like, yeah. How am I going to fit that on the page? But yeah. we'll make it work. We'll make it work. It's like really tight yeah. kerning. <laughs> yeah, Finding yeah, exactly. A font that's like news, newspaper, like print available so yep. that you can read it when it's super super tiny and printed terribly oh exactly it's tough the tricks. but yeah there definitely is a few tricks out there um all right i love this trick too if you're selecting like a couple of vectors that aren't grouped together but they're the same color uh i'm just going to go in and actually just do the whole select uh same color what are we doing here? I forgot what I was doing for a second then. We need to outline this, so, which is why we need to outline expand it. We've just done that so I can make this a different color. Hmm. So, so you selected the shape effect. was grouped. Just trying to understand yeah. what you did then. So the shape was grouped. Yeah. There's multiple shapes within there and there were, there's potentially outlines or it's expanded. Yeah, maybe take us through that again because that was interesting. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So here in this case, I've actually used a plugin to make the um kind of sticker look like the out offset goes just outside the shape mm. so you can see here that it's actually not expanded so i just want to go through and expand that shape so that the whole thing's a vector so we'll do that expanded boom done and then in this instance if i click into it and click like part of the vector let's just click this part you can't actually see it too much so when i click the orange here it's actually uh just part one part of the shape because yep. none of the rest of it is grouped but then if you click that come up to select same and you want to select something that's the same fill color you then go through and select same fill color oh very cool and then do you know where this is really useful and i don't know if many people do this is for color palettes so what we do as a company and what i've really like enforced in my in my brands and um you know when i'm exploring different things i'll show you how to do it so i'm going to just go through and quickly delete this can be a last little tip i'm going to delete all those all right so again we're good on our nine grid but maybe we're exploring different types of color palettes and our clients saying oh you know like i don't really i'm not really vibing the color palette don't love it um, and I want to try something else. So what we would do is actually go through, duplicate the nine grid and you can see there that little guy didn't actually expand properly. Hey, that's cool. Um, let's bring him back across and expand him. I'm doing it. Yeah, the cheeky, the cheeky guy. Do 
going, I I always say that about my victors. I call them a little guy, cheeky guy. Yeah, I do that all the time. <laughs> this little fella. Yes, exactly. So we've grouped our nine grid. If we double click into the nine grid again, what we can do again is that same process. So just say we want to select maybe the pink shades. I'll select one pink, select same, fill color. And then we're going to go through and actually maybe we want to make it just all pink, purple and dark blue. Sorry, purple, orange, dark blue. Um, that's a really easy way we can do that um, and just trial some different colors. Or we could go through and trial the dark blue as a different color. So again, let's go fill color. So it's going to select everything that's vector as a fill color and we can go and change that. Well, um, it's not exactly <laughs> a good looking design. Uh, maybe even like a brown would be kind of interesting. Um, you know, chocolatey. Let's go a deeper brown. That's quite cool. It's quite fun. Mm. Something like that, you know? So it's a really easy way to go through and change uh, color palettes without, you know, clicking everything one by one and adjusting yeah. it. So what That's we'll really do cool. is we'll just, con yeah, continue to do that and like I'll create like six, seven, eight, nine different color palettes using that method to just explore new things. So this is looking cute. It's coming along. I want this guy to kind of pop in every now and then on the page, which I quite like. He's going to pop in here. And again, because I'm the client, I'm going to I'm going to remove some of the text. I'm going to be cheeky today. Yeah, keep it simple to make it for just, yourself. Exactly, to make it work. We're here for the design, not the copy. <laughs> All right. I mean, this is looking cute, you know? Maybe you want to add even add in um, some like additional layering into the, the background here. Um, so, because I think as well, like something about adding in multiple layers on a design can really like help with the look of it. So I'm just going to sketch this out quick. And I'm going to do a little light tint of the pink. And let's do a quick clipping mask. And see what this looks like. Oh. The clipping mask wasn't quite in front. Is this going to be the right one? I'm singing again, even though I can't <laughs> sing. <laughs> oh no, something's happening. All right. I'm going to try one more time. You know what? I know why. It's because he's on another layer. That's exactly oh. why. There we go. Figured it out, people. Nice. Boom. There you go. So let's remove the guides. Got two more there. Oh, they're hidden away. Who's, where's those guides? There you go. I mean, you can see what I mean. Like just adding in mm. different layers there can like help it come to life. Maybe it would actually be better if we even did more drips down um down the page there yeah that would look really cool just That's to cool. split it up a little bit more yeah because it's um, not, it's hard to try to stop it from being like a wall of text i find you know looking a bit like a newspaper and i think that breaks it up really nicely totally be playful with it because it's still legible yeah yeah for sure you can certainly um do that and even just adding like those tints of color um can help as well um and it depends on your brand guidelines if that's kind of if you're allowing for that, but for a brand like this, it's a little bit more playful. Yeah, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna allow for it. I'm gonna say that's that's cool. It's fine. Um, we've got five minutes left, but we got a great question from chat, and I think ooh. Christy, you'd be great to answer this question. So I think maybe we'll just make sure we we ask it. So the yeah, so, uh, it's from Jared. So what's up, Jared? Um, thanks for the question. So they say, uh, I know it's not relevant to the stream subject, but what's the best option to gain, ex to gain experience in design? I live in a small town lacking resources from companies specializing in design. So Christy, any thoughts on that? I do have thoughts on this. Great question. And it can really confuse people because it is hard. You know, there's so much out there, but my best advice would be to download even the free trial of Adobe products. I would start with Photoshop or Illustrator and then literally go on YouTube and just type in beginner uh, tutorial for Adobe Illustrator yeah. and just work through a little tutorial and then just work through one of those, say every day. It might be, you know, 10 minutes, five minutes, but even just a little step-by-step -step guide into how to 
use them, you know, the main uh, tools that are in these programs will really help you um, get, get your foot in the door, just like make a start basically. And then from there, you can do more complex tutorials. There's certainly lots of websites that can help you with that. Um, and it really depends, like they can be costly. But there's, there's a lot out there that you can find tutorials that are pretty pretty well priced. So yep. yeah. That's good. And I think you touched on as well, like an important thing is if you're coming into kind of design, you're looking at, oh my gosh, so many programs, there's so many tools. Look at the toolbar on Chris on the left hand side of Christie's thing. Um, it's crazy. <laughs> but really, you probably only need to focus on, you know, five or six like tools yeah. and things like that. It's really like type, layout, you know, visual language and hierarchy mm. and stuff. And if you could do that, it's like 50, 60 percent of what you actually need to do. And then everything else is that professional level, like finessing things, speeding up workflow and things like that. Um, yeah. The fundamentals are, you know, you actually, they're actually easy to learn hard to master. Um, so yeah. I think Christy had great advice. I would be giving to friends and family, which would be, you know, play with the programs, do some tutorials, do some basic stuff and kind of go, go from there. There's so much free content out there yeah. um, to check out. Yeah. There's a lot. And I think just knowing that it will take a while to get good and yep. being comfortable with that idea is really key. Um, and you just got to yeah, practice makes perfect. As hard as that is to hear, because we all do want the easy way in sometimes, but we've got to work hard. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm just continuing to pull this together quickly before we end the, in the live to showcase something fun, something exciting. Now we're just going to want our waffles before we leave, you know. Yeah. Going to have you going to be having um waffles for dessert today <laughs> everyone who's been here <laughs> um and again here you'd want obviously some prices and we could highlight those with even you know a cool little call out button and a similar kind of uh, again use those curved corners that we have again you know you're trying to just duplicate whatever have you have in your branding um mm. and roll out the same kind of look and feel add a little price in here let's say i'm just gonna throw in ten dollars here we go ten bucks sounds pretty good inflation does. has not hit mr waffle which is very good <laughs> you're right it has not i'm stoked about that guys it's great it's like a student special it's a student special for you jared um ten dollar waffles the big g <laughs> absolute bargain exactly all right you can see here again you just kind of repeat things and um, pull them across and, and make them look good and, and line everything up. Spacing, spacing, again, it's huge. Make sure everything looks good, tidy. Let's add um, another one of these little guys in. Speaking of looking good, I think we are looking good. So um, we're about to run out of time for today's stream. Thank you so much, Christy. Um, yeah, you're like, okay, pens down. I've got to keep going. Um, no, we are, we are out of time. Um, this has been really great. If you missed... Um, our stream on Tuesday, go and check it out. The videos will always be available um, on YouTube and Behance. And Christy, yeah, it's just been a blast hanging out with you. Thank you for sharing uh, so much of what you do with us. Oh, amazing. No, thank you guys for watching and having me on Adobe Live. Excellent. Well, we look forward to having you on again and everyone will be back next week with more Adobe Live. Thank you for the questions and uh, have a great day. We shall have our waffles. <laughs> Enjoy your waffles. Bye. <laughs>